For this walk, we've come to a place called Fallend, which is located between Kirby Stephen to the north and Sedra to the south. And this route is actually based on walk number 26 in Wainwright's book, Walks on the Howgill Fells. Now this isn't exactly the same as his route, I make a little variation, but it's a nice little route, about two and a half to three miles in length. And I love this walk. In fact, I'd say it's one of my favorite little short walks outside Teesdale where I live. Once I've had my coffee, I'll put my boots on, put my rucksack on, and we'll head off and I'll show you around this short but delightful route. I've parked up near the old disused quarry on the street. That's the minor road that forks off the main Sedbra Kirby Stephen Road. From the old quarry we'll head east up the hill, walk along the top of Fellang Clouds and then descend back down into the valley, walk along the road back to the car. We skirt round to the left of the quarry. There's not much of a path here, but you soon pick up a reasonable track. And soon you're heading up through some limestone boulder fields. A dry stone wall marks the field boundary. Keep this to your left and continue uphill. The next short while it's just a case of following what has become a well-defined track, wide enough for a car tour something like that, and that's probably what it was used for. I'd like to waffle here and give you all the history of Fell End Clouds and why these tracks are here and anything about the limestone and the quarrying. But as I don't know it, I won't. Just let you enjoy the scenery. And there's plenty of it. In fact, from here, I can just about make out the A66 heading across the Pennines. Over to your right is Harter Fell, one of the Howgill Fells, but most of them are actually covered by cloud today. There's plenty of signs of old workings here, including this, a shake hole formed by digging into the ground looking for minerals or lead. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from here, but just at the end of that gully is a hole, and that's the cave that Wainwright marks on his map. It's not very big, I don't know what it's about, but we'll go and investigate. Well, it's hardly a cave. It's only about six feet long and it's very wet. It's obviously natural. There's no spoil here from where people have been digging out or anything of the like. And it's probably just a, an old watercourse that's undercut the limestone. It's dry now, but in the past it probably released all the water from under the limestone and away it went. So hardly a cave. Now, in the past, what I probably would have done is stood back there, got Wainwright's book out, taken a photograph, and then 
did a painting of this little cave as he did in his book but no I've moved on from that the Wayne Wrights in colour is behind me other people are doing something similar now so I'm moving on and I'm up here to see if there's any good points for me to go and paint or sketch and produce my own work and do my next project so not much to see if you came here but just of interest we've just climbed up from the cave which is just down here and we're now onto the terrace of limestone which is called Felling Clouds and you can see over here the cairn well the cairns in fact there's several and then the exposed limestone through the grass now I've been up here loads of times I can't count how many times I've been but every time I find something new nothing really important or valuable but some nice cairns or a nice aspect of the limestone pavement which I've taken a photograph of or done a sketch of and I just love it the, the history behind the cairns where they've mossed over a bit and then there's little little sections of walls like uh, currucks you know where someone's taken shelter years ago and I, I just love the history of the place and the fact that it's mysterious to me I don't know the history really behind it the weather's not brilliant today low cloud flat light but even so lovely to be out and I love it of course I shouldn't be telling you all this because you'll want to come and see for yourself and it'll be really busy but it won't be busy because of where it is we're not in the Lake District we're not in the Yorkshire Dales really but yeah lovely place It's not much of a day for it today, but I always like to spend a little bit of time doing some sketching or painting. These two cans make a lovely subject, so I'll just do a quick simple pencil drawing. just staying close to the main edge of the limestone escarpment because as you head further south there's just one point which I think if you just went to the main top and then carried on you would miss and it's this I would only call it an amphitheatre of, of limestone and I'm pretty sure that many people who come here don't even know it's here, they miss it entirely. But I've been up here, I mean it's not a very good day today, but I've been up here on a really nice late summer's evening when the sun sets away up there, over there and the light hits the rocks here and it's just beautiful, especially if it's a nice calm warm evening, wonderful place to be. The Howgills are down there to the south and then just these rocks in the foreground they make a wonderful subject for a photograph if the light's right sadly it's not today
I hope you appreciate that every time I take a shot of me walking into the distance, I then have to stop, turn around, come back and pick up the camera. Just for you. This is the top of Felen Clouds. Now, it's not a summit, it's not anything spectacular. There's two more cairns along here and there's multiple mounds of stone all around us. But yeah, this is the biggest cairn and on the highest point. No idea what height it is. It's sort of irrelevant because up this way is Wild Boar Fell, which is much higher than where we are and then the Howgills are a big range of hills over there. It's just a nice place to be. From here we walk to the south, down the bridge and then we come to the solitary tree that Wainwright marks in the book. It's a sycamore tree, you won't miss it and it's a lovely location. Off we go. There's some lovely old cairns on felling clouds such as this one. I just love the mosses and lichens which grow on the north side of the stonework. There's no really well-defined paths up here. You just sort of make your own way and it's lovely to explore. These deep trenches in the limestone look quite natural but I understand they're actually open cast lead mining. This is Wainwright's solitary tree. A lone sycamore that just stands on the landscape. It makes a great subject for a photograph when the weather's right, or even a painting. I might include it in a painting myself in the future. It's lost a few branches recently, but it still stands firm. I wonder how long it's been here. From the tree, it's really a case of, of just making our way back to the start. We head down past this cairn, which you'll see in a minute, a nice tall cairn which someone's rebuilt recently, and then down to pick up another track, which takes us back to the road, and then a very short walk back to the start. There's actually maybe a dozen or more cairns placed all over Felen Clouds. I'm not sure why. I mean, it's not as if there's lots of people come here. There's certainly plenty of building material, but 
each one's placed on its own location and many of them have got really good views up and down the valley. Speaking of the valley, that's where we're heading now. We're heading down towards the road and the traffic as we're looking at it heads to our left down towards Sedbra and up to our right towards Kirby Stephen. It's a gentle slope down, there's not much of a path. In fact, there's no path at all. You just make your own way down and shortly you'll pick up a track which takes you back down to the road, that quiet road called the street. That's where we're heading. I'm on a bit of a, a faint track now that's come down off the fell side, probably used by the farmer. And then when you get down, you'll get near to this wall, keep the wall on the left and you'll see the farms down there. But we head sort of half right. And in fact, shortly the track gets a bit more distinct. It's just sort of open moorland this and it's a good place to keep an eye out for a bit of wildlife. When I've been on here before, I've seen hares and, well, actually I saw a stoat one time jigging amongst all the limestone. But today we've heard curlew, lapwings, skylarks, and what we've seen today, but haven't got close enough to film, are some fell ponies. They roam around, there's about uh, 12, 15 of them and they roam around here on the uh, landscape all year round. So you'll see, you'll see plenty of signs of them, I can guarantee you that. All of a sudden, what seems to be out of nowhere, there are these two buildings on the landscape. Obviously you can tell they're man-made and quite well made at that. They're actually lime kilns and they work in conjunction with the limestone that we see around here. Let's go and have a look. Okay, this is a traditional lime kiln, obviously out of use now. And how they worked was basically at the back there, at the top, a, a layer of lime was placed into the top and then some coal or peat, and then some lime, and then some, the same again, coal or peat. And what then happened was in this sort of opening here, I think they set fire to it in here, and the whole thing burnt, not a big um, blaze, but it was just a, a gradual process. And then when it was all done and everything was burnt, then they took the lime out, which had changed form uh, by the heating, and they used it to spread on the pasture land around about and it made the land sweeter, let's say, and better for growing stuff. That's it in a nutshell, as far as I know. Feel free to contradict me in the comments in the box below. But yeah, that's the understanding. You see them all over the place. Some in a various state of repair. This one's not too bad, but since I've been here last, it's collapsed in a bit. This is the second of the two lime kilns. And this one's actually in much better order. In fact, I'd say it's nearly perfect. The interior of the opening here is solid as anything. Great workmanship, considering there's no mortar or anything like that, just dry stoning. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, that's it for walking on Fell End Clowns. We're getting down here now, the road's just here. And we hit the road, turn right. It is a quiet road. The main road is now over there. This used to be the main road at one time. But this is a much quieter road. Still get a little bit of traffic on it. And we pick up that and then walk back to the start.
just as a, a little aside, as you walk along the road, the street, in one field here, I don't know if you can see it now, it's getting a little bit dark and they're a bit far away, there's half a dozen stones setting on, on a little rise in the field and they look like something ancient. They're not marked on any maps because I think that several years ago a farmer had these in his field and he just put them there because I don't remember them being here on the first visits or few visits when I was here. I may be wrong but I'm pretty sure that they're someone's playfulness if you like more than any historic relevance. As you can probably see behind me this is just a long straight stretch of road nothing really of interest. So while I make my way back to the car I'll fit in those photographs that I was telling you about pictures that I've taken in different seasons on Fallen clouds. And that's us back at the start, ready to head home. I think Bailey's ready for his tea. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do click the like button. If you like the videos that I'm currently posting up and would like to see them all, then click the subscribe button and you'll get informed about when I post my next film. In the meantime, thanks for watching.